So the purpose of this video is to talk about balancing chemical equations. The example of the equation shown below is photosynthesis, which is actually one of the equations that we'll spend pretty much a whole chapter on as we work our way through the year here. But what this shows, uh, for starters, has to do with the way that photosynthesis works. Plants, for starters, need carbon dioxide and water which we see on the left-hand side of the formula. That's our CO2 and our H2O. This side of the formula is called the reactant side. These are the things that are required for a chemical reaction to take place. The right-hand side, on the other hand, is the product side. So here we see sugar, which is C6H12O6, and then our oxygens, which are the O2s. Now, the problem with this reaction is it isn't balanced. So for example, if we look at the carbons, there is one carbon on this side, there are six carbons on that side. Well, you cannot make a sugar molecule from one carbon dioxide. It's not possible because you don't have enough carbons. So the whole purpose of balancing chemical equations is to get the same number of elements on the reactant side as you're seeing on the product side. So part of the strategy for going through and balancing those out has to do with, for starters, writing down the elements that you see on both sides of the equation. So in this particular problem, we see the same three things on both sides, which is the way it should be. You should see the same elements on both sides of the equation. We have carbon, we have hydrogen, and then we have oxygen on both sides. So that's always your first step, is just to go through and write those in. My goodness, my pen's not lined up. There we go. So what you want to do then is uh, go through and count the number that you have on each side and just tally them up. So we already mentioned the carbons, so that's a good place to start. We've got one carbon on this side, and then we had six carbons on the right-hand side, also known as the product side. Next, we'll go through and do our hydrogens. We have two hydrogens from our H2O. On the other side, we have 12 hydrogens. The tallies are easy because that way you can add and, uh, and take things away pretty easily if, if you need to later on. Um, now, oxygen gets a little bit tougher. If we look on the left-hand side, we have two oxygens in carbon dioxide, one oxygen in water. So you have to make sure that you're counting up all of the total oxygens. So for those, we would end up with three. On the right-hand side, we also see the oxygens in two different places. So there are six oxygens in sugar, and then there's two oxygens in the oxygen gas. So you've got to combine those two together in order to get eight total oxygens on the right-hand side. So we'll add in our tallies for those. The next thing to talk about is the way that you can add things to both sides of the equation. Like I said to you, we have to get the same number of carbons on both sides, for example. Uh, something to consider is that we cannot simply just add six carbons to the left-hand side of the equation. If you think of these things like in math class, they're almost like bracketed together. So all of these molecules go together, and you can't really split them up. So for example, if we're going to even out our carbons, which probably isn't a good place to start, uh, the, the best thing to do is to look at the ones that are the most discrepant, the most different. So in this case, we'll actually take a look at our hydrogens, right? If we have two hydrogens on this side, and we have 12 hydrogens on that side. That's our value that's the most different. It actually helps sometimes if you go after the most difficult one first. So we'll look at that one. Uh, if we're going to even out these two, I can't just simply add uh, the, I guess we would need, what, 10? We couldn't just add 10 hydrogens to the left-hand side of the equation. Like I can't just change that from a 2 into a 12. Uh, what we have to do is add a coefficient in front of this that would be distributed over the entire molecule. So in order to get 12 hydrogens over here, we're going to have to change our coefficient, which we'll end up writing these in red, into a 6. So now what we end up seeing here is you end up with 6 times 2, which will give you 12 down at the bottom. So we'll add in our 12 tallies. And then that matches up with our 12 hydrogens on the other side. The thing to consider, though, is that this didn't just change our number of hydrogens. This 6 also gets distributed over the 0. Something to talk about with the subscripts here is if there is no subscript, there is an implied 1. So 6 times our 1 is going to give us 6 oxygens now down here at the bottom.
Now you also have to add in the two oxygens from carbon dioxide, so that brings our total on the left hand side to eight. Which is convenient because that's the same value that we're seeing on the right hand side. So at this point, we have our oxygens balanced with eight on both sides. You get two here, and then six times our implied one is six. Six and two gives us eight down at the bottom. So now all we have to do is go through and balance out our carbons. You notice we've got one carbon on this side. We have six carbons on that side. Again, we can't just add a six down here. We have to add it out in front. So unfortunately, when we fix this one, it's going to unbalance our oxygens. But if we take that six and we distribute it across, that will give us six carbons, which balances us out there. But now if we do the math on our oxygens, we have six times two, which is 12, and then six times our implied one, which is another six. 12 and six gives us 18 altogether. So if we add our tallies here, that'd be four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. That's 15. 16, 17, 18 oxygens. All right, so now we just need to balance out the oxygen on the other side and we'll be all set. The thing to look for is if you have an element by itself, that's always the easiest way to balance this. I mean, could we get 18 by adding stuff here? Sure we could, we could put a two out in front of that. The problem with that becomes, if we do that, now we'd have 12, you'd still have to add a coefficient here and then that's gonna add a lot more things to our equation, it's going to add hydrogens and carbons as well. Since all we're trying to do is balance out oxygens, and since we're trying to get an even number, right, we're trying to get 18, you can achieve that with an even number diatomic, like oxygen that has a, a subscript of two. So right now, if we look down here, we have eight. So if you consider what we need to do in order to get this to be even, we just have to put another subscript, or another coefficient rather, of six in front of our oxygen. So now if we distribute that one across, we'll end up with 12 oxygens there, six more from the sugar, and then all together, we have 18 on both sides. So if you use this tally method, it's an easy way of going through and balancing the chemical equations. Uh, it's something that takes a little bit of time for sure, but there are some strategies that you can use in order to make this a little bit easier for yourself. I'll briefly go over those strategies with you before the end of the video. Just to talk quickly here about some strategies. What you want to do for starters is write down each element on both sides of the equation. As I mentioned to you before, you should have the, the same elements on both sides. If you come up with something only on one side of the equation, definitely look again. It means you probably missed it somewhere in the equation, which is easy to do, especially when you end up with compounds that have many elements in them. As I mentioned before, you want to tally the number of elements that are already present. So before you go through and balance anything, just tally up what's already there. And then this is probably the most helpful thing to start with the one that is the most discrepant. So start with the ones that are the most different. If you remember from the example, we had two hydrogens on one side, we had 12 hydrogens on the other side. We went through and balanced that one first. Um, you can certainly balance these equations in a variety of different ways. Like there's no one set way to go through and do it. But if you do this, if you start with the one that's the most different to begin with, it'll probably set you up on the path to success. So I appreciate you taking the time to watch. We'll practice this plenty in class, so you'll get a lot of reinforcement with it. So I'll talk to you about this one when I see you next time. Thank you.